Okay, uh, today with TypeScript, we've already covered a lot of stuff like generics and whatnot. We have, uh, were you in the last one? No? We have a couple new faces, three new faces actually. Um, yeah, so you guys are in for a treat, I guess, uh, unless I don't have anything prepared. So um, I guess I'll, I want I want to know what my audience, who my audience is, I should say, so, um, so I can gear it for you a little bit, because this is a very dynamic presentation. So um, do we have JavaScript background here, or what's the level of interest with TypeScript? I'm on the page builder team, so we've implemented most of it in TypeScript. Okay. And but I'm still kind of fairly new to Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that team, <laughs> and I'm, I'm aware of that project, so um, yeah. Are there any uh, pain points or something that that you specifically want help with um, kind of understanding, like truly understanding how it works or something like that? Not really, I'm just looking for just a General, okay. How about you guys? So I'm in the channels, I think we all are in the channels. Sales channels, okay, yeah, I'm aware of that project too, so okay. Good deal. Okay, so we covered kind of some advanced topics the last couple sessions. We can get into some of the same stuff again if need be. I mean, I'm sure there's little golden nuggets that we can talk about. Um, but I, I was thinking if there's no like special requests, maybe we can just look at the handbook and see what sticks out, and then we can dive into a topic that interests us. So by all means, if something uh, – I, I don't want you guys to just let me talk. I want you to like interrupt me. Tell me, oh, I want to know more about that. By all means, I'll dive into it, and we can figure it out. Um, so let's see here. We we went over some like React-specific stuff uh, last week as well. Are there any pain points there with anyone here with uh, React and TypeScript together specifically, or is that pretty much OK? OK, we're good there. Nothing specific, OK. So generics. Um, I've talked about it twice already, so I don't know if I'm going to be doing it again today if, unless you guys are really struggling with it, but like, that's probably the number one thing that people would struggle with. Um, functions, obviously, we have like lexical this context. We've got, let's see, type inference. We've got tuples being used here. Um, there's some concepts like type guards and stuff like that where you have like an if condition that uh, like checks for the type of something and then based off of that check TypeScript kind of narrows down the type into what it expects it to be. So if you have an incoming type of string number boolean but you do like a type of check, uh, actually I'll just, I'll just illustrate that right now. Um, let's just create a new function. Yeah, so function function foo, right? So what I was saying is if you have like a value that could be string, number, or boolean, right? So it could be any one of those three types. Um, let's just export this so it stops complaining. I'm saying if you do like if uh, type of value equals string, you know, return uh, 42, otherwise return value. So my point here is that this value has been narrowed to number or boolean because you've already done the string check up here. So TypeScript is, is smart enough to narrow that type and remove that string portion of that union type so that when you're down here, it knows that you're dealing with a number or boolean. Didn't used to do this. This is one of those issues that I submitted um, for the TypeScript project a while back, but then they fixed it, and I'm pretty excited that that works now. Um, that's just a small nugget there very simple concept. Um, let's see, iterators, generators. I haven't been doing much on that type compatibility. Modules. Right, well, the module system is very similar to ES5, but it's like common JS when you're dealing with Node. Uh, let's see here. You're in module namespaces. We don't use namespaces. Those aren't really part of ECMAScript, so there's that. Let's get into... Oh, declaration merging is something that some people might not be familiar with. So let's say you have um, an interface, hi, number in here, right? Like you can have a completely separate file that also has the same interface. I can even, I think I can even export it here. I 
it's not being used. I'll export all local. Oh, I see. You got to export both. But my point here is that, like, if you create an interface, you can actually create another interface, either in the same file or in a separate file, and it's actually going to merge it together so that when you use uh, when you use that interface here, for example, there, and you hover over value, it'll show you that it's of the high type. But um, it's not really okay. Let's do this. Value value dot barbat. See how it think it knows that both of them exist, right? So it's it's merged those two interfaces together. That's a little handy thing to know. And sometimes you might be confused about certain things because you might see like um, there's like a built-in lib dot ds dot lib dot d dot ts file that TypeScript provides with Node, right? For example, and it might have a whole bunch of built-in APIs and and web APIs and things that you uh, just kind of rely upon, right? Like window and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes there will be a library in there, uh, like a testing library or something that will kind of augment the existing object with more stuff. And this is how they do it. So if you're going to create like your own library, you might take an existing interface that's already provided to you, and you're going to add more stuff to it. That's how you would do that. <coughs> and, and yeah, Sorry, what's up? Do you know if there's a way to like overload and say like it's either this high or this high? You know, like in this case, no, it's already merged. So once it's merged, it's merged. You, there's no separation. Um, you could do something like omit high and then just say, I just don't want the bads part of it. And you could do that. And so now we've got dot bar. Um, but you have to be explicit about that because at this point, this high type is a merge. It, it's, a, it's a merge of those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question, though. Really good. Oh right. So like, if, are are you asking if uh, type of value dot? Oh yeah, good good question. Yeah. So if you had bar like that, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So right here it says uh, subsequent property declarations must have the same type. There are actually ways to do that, though, uh, if, if you're asking about that. Like, you could just, like, remove this, for example, and you could say, hey, I have uh, this high type, and I want to just add bar to it, and um, it's going to be a string. And so in this case, you're dealing with value.bar. There's still one property, right? But, oh, man, it doesn't like that, does it? So if type of value.bar equals number, return 42, and then here, string. Yeah, so value, oh, value.bar, sorry, value.bar. It says never. Yeah, it's not smart enough for some reason. But yeah, it should know that. I would imagine that's the type of thing that it should know. And I swear I've seen something in the past that was similar to that. I just can't remember off the top of my head like what the feature was. But yeah, there should be a way to... There, there's utility libraries out there, like um, uh, one's called TS... Like a TypeScript utility library, something like that. Um, yeah, again, off the top of my head, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a couple utility libraries out there that have some things that TypeScript does not have built in. Like, for example, merge. You could probably just search for TypeScript merge. And you might find the library that I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, you might have to search for it. But, I mean, this is just using an intersection type. But yeah unfortunately we could probably look into that later but ts yeah there's two two libraries that stick out to me but they're meant to give you a lot of like uh, utility functions like uh, merging and picking and stuff like that now that pick is built into typescript it's not as valuable but they have other things like that uh, okay so that's merging interfaces uh, merging namespaces, we don't care about that. So, JSX decorators. Uh, well, decorators aren't really approved yet, so let's get let's not get into that territory. 
triple slash, type checking, utility types. What was the advanced types? I thought that was in here. Yeah, this, I don't know why I didn't see that in the list here. Oh, there it is, right there, advanced types. Okay, this is the stuff that we want to look at, so. Okay, intersection types. That is what we just saw with the AND operator that you're, you, when I merge the two things together. Um, the cool thing about that merge helper is it actually sees it as one object, so when you hover over it, it looks like it's all one object. Whereas with this, you hover over it and you're going to see two separate types that are just being kind of intersected together. So uh, let's see, union types are the piped one. So just this is a really basic concept, but I think you saw this before where it was like string or number. That's called a union type. And then you can use whatever type you want there in place of string or number. But... Um, That's a, yeah, you know what? That's a good point. Uh, let's see here. Bar. Yes. Okay. Yes, good point. Yeah. Cool. Great. Okay, type guards. This looks like duck typing, right? Yeah. Oh, pet is fish. Yeah, that is an interesting one right here. Pet is fish. So if you look at um, Lodash, great example of a JavaScript library, right? You're going to see some pretty interesting types in there because, uh, let's see here, definitely typed. This is a huge repository. It just has like so many libraries in here that are JavaScript related, all grouped into this one massive repository so much that GitHub can't even display it. So I just use the T button to search for like Lodash, for example. And you'll look in, you'll find stuff like, let's see here, is, uh, this is, this is a big library, so Lodash. These are not generated by Lodash because Lodash is not written in TypeScript. So these are like just developers that came in here and added TypeScript types for Lodash so that you don't have to pull your hair out wondering what the signature is all the time and looking up documentation. So if you dive into this a little bit, you're going to see some very common functions that you're used to, like clone and concat, compact. I use those ones all the time. But there's some is checks, like uh, is, is boolean, right? This is a good one. Everything goes back to index. I remember that, so index dot this guy uh, yeah this is such a huge thing so let's see here index math number util I think it's util common util Uh, not finding that. Come on, do, I'll, I'll just look up their documentation real quick. So we want to like is boolean. Oh, that's in lang. Okay. So go to lang. This one. Yeah, so if you forget how to do this at some point, just look up at the Lodash documentation and you'll see um, is boolean right here. This is an interesting function signature right here. So let's go back over to the file and do that. So export function is boolean, value any, value is boolean. And so what you're telling this function is that, hey, I, I've written a utility function called is boolean. I don't care what value comes in, but the value coming out is going to be this indicator that the, a particular value is Boolean or not. A function whose declared type is neither vo void nor any, yeah, okay, yeah, we, obviously we need to return a value. So we're going to re return type of value equals Boolean. 
Now it's a valid function. So if you hover over it, you're going to see value is Boolean. The interesting thing about this is you can have like a normal, uh, let's say a, a new function where the value coming in is, it could be a Boolean or it could be a string, as said before. And as I mentioned before, you can have like if type of value equals Boolean, return 42, otherwise return value, right? You could do whatever you want. But if you hover over value, you'll see it's narrowed to a string here, right? Well, if I just had this, this kind of function like that, where it's just a function that returns type of value equals Boolean, and then called is Boolean value here, it doesn't actually narrow the type. It still says string or Boolean, right? So the important thing is that very special value is Boolean return type there. Because once you do that, you can actually replace this whole check with is Boolean value. And then the type does narrow. See? So you've effectively told the caller that, you know, this function does something special. It does a type of check. So you could do this, uh, I believe you could do this with other like more complicated structures, like even high in here, you know? So you could say, um, you know, is high. You could say this is a high or a string, and you could say is high value return value dot bar. And if it's not, it's a string. So it's smart enough to know even those complex types. It doesn't have to be a primitive type, right? That's valuable in some cases if you're doing a utility library, uh, but in your day-to-day, -day, maybe not as much. Oh, yeah, good point. Um, great point, great point. Uh, so let's see here. So value to high, value dot bar. Let's say, like, mm, you could just say, I mean, something like that, right? Where you're kind of duct typing it. I don't know if that would. Gotcha. Okay, so you would just have to write some logic inside. Something. Yeah, has own property, something like that, that you want to say this is, in fact, a. Yeah, good, great question, because TypeScript is not going to do that for you. It's not going to have any kind of automatic code generation that checks a particular interface type and like looks at every single property. You could have hundreds of properties in there, right? So, what kind of runtime checks do you want to do that verifies that 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 you believe that that type is a particular type. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be perfect, as you can see here. But in a primitive case, it probably would be, because you'd just be doing a type of check. Great question. Do -do. Let's go back to advanced types. Yeah, I like that one. Nullable types. We talked about this one a little bit last week, but not this is kind of the same type narrowing going on right here yeah I don't think that's worth talking about right now but type alias mm, yeah I guess that's valuable okay so let's say you have a type called foo which is a string or number you can create a new type called bar, which is foo, or boolean. You can even, you know, you can have subtypes of types like that. So in the in the case of an interface where you would extend another interface, in a, <clears throat> in a type situation, you might just want to add more to the union type. That's pretty much all that's talking about. String literal types. Yeah, this is definitely something I wanted to talk about because. If you have a like in Redux, right? We have actions that sp that expect a certain um, kind of type, like type set foo, right? Well, you could do that. Let's see, like action type equals set foo or set bar. Let's say. So you've got a union type here called action type that is one of these two string literals. These are not actual string types. They're string literal types. So they're literally this, the value that you have in there is what it has to be. So uh, I saw a comment actually on our project, Dave, recently about, about this where like, oh, but can't we get IntelliSense when we have like a constants file that has all these constants in it? 
don't isn't that safer isn't that a better way to get all that that information back and actually it's the other way around because if you have these types set up with a union type like that and then you have some sort of object like uh, I don't know something where you know type is of type action type and now you have a function that says uh, go and you say action type just let's just say action action type don't get caught up on the words of these too much but my point here is that you know that you have an action coming in and if you say dot type <clears throat> actually I need to I need to call this function so let's do this I'm gonna call the go function and this is gonna say hey you need to give me an action type so I say okay I give you an object and I know that type is what you're looking for Oh come on Interface something. Oh, right. Action type said foo. Something. This needs to be something. Yeah. So control space gives me type. And now if I hit control space again, there's the auto completion that you get out of it, right? You don't have to have a separate constants file. You don't have to import constants every time you, you run this action. The action's already wired up. So when you call this function, you get everything that you need right away. There's no, there's no room for error here. You couldn't possibly make an error if you're leveraging IntelliSense, right? Like you're not going to be able to say set bar or set foo with a lowercase o. It's going to complain, oh, you, you messed up. This is supposed to be something else. Uh, let's see, set foo is not assignable to type action type. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you why, but if you look it up, you'll find a why pretty quickly. You can just right-click on type, peak definition, and you'll see, oh, the type is an action type. Peek that definition or go to definition, and you see what types you can set to it. But anyway, any questions about that? No. Have you guys been using that in your project at all with the with the action types? Uh, yes. Oh, right, that's right. Yeah, but you're still using reducers, right? No. No reducer hooks. Okay, okay. Let's see what else? Numeric literal types? I actually don't even. Oh, right. It's just a union type with actual numbers in it. So you can do the same thing as you can do with a string and say only these numbers um, satisfy this requirement. Yeah, eh, it's pretty smart. But let's see. Enum member types. Yeah, these are interesting. I'll talk about. Well, so enums are not really an ECMAScript supported feature. So you can't even use them in Create React App because Create React App doesn't support namespaces or enums because they're not part of the ECMAScript. Like, they're not set up in Babel or anything um, for that very reason. TypeScript used to do kind of its own thing and create these features that are not really baked in uh, to ECMAScript, but then they realized that that was probably not a great idea at some point, and they pivoted, and they've been following only ECMAScript from now on, from then on, I should say. And so these types of features aren't going to be something you see a lot. But it does have an enum type. Say if you're writing a TypeScript library that uh, has nothing to do with React and nothing to do with the Create React app, and you wanted to use an enum, you could absolutely do that. And the way that you do it right, so go shape kind circle right like that that's how you call it right so an enum is defined as either a circle or a square you define your function with an incoming type of shape kind and then when you call the function you can provide it with shape kind dot circle or you can provide it with like a zero oddly like let's see if it accepts three it seems to think it does but you can actually send it a number because under the hood what you're getting is this this is it's indexing them based off of their uh, numerical occurrence that's what's happening under the hood even though you didn't say that and then if you do something like this uh, let's do this uh, triangle triangle three that makes a lot of sense 
Yeah, so that would satisfy actually the function. You can't pass in a, a string. It won't like that. But if you pass in a number, it's okay with it because it knows that it's going to map back to that enum. The interesting thing here is that, yeah, although 0, 1, and 3 are in here, and you've, you've broken the convention, you're no longer a 0 index because triangle now skipped 2 and went to 3, right? Well, if you did the same thing, let's say, here. Oh. Yeah. And you just omitted the assignments here. If you just did that, it's kind of interesting, but under the hood, it's going to do this for you, like we talked about before. But under the hood, it's going to resume where it left off on the on the sequential count, so you don't get into any kind of like numeric collisions or anything like that. So that's what's happening if you all of a sudden skip a few numbers and say what you want here. So you might decide that if you don't want that to happen, you might just move triangle up here and then call it a day. But yeah, again, not a feature that you're probably going to use very much, if at all, but it's nice to know that it's there. And if you want to actually get the number from, <clears throat> if you want to get the, let's see, start to say 42. Does that work? There's a way to reverse it and like get the actual, uh, I don't know, I don't remember. You look it up, but shape kind of circle, shape kind of square. Yeah, I think it's like this, actually. It's, um, So this is a string, and the string actually represents circle. I believe it's going to actually say circle in the string. So there's a way to kind of go from the number to the string, and there's a way to go from to the string, or from the string to the number. There's a way to go both directions if you want to. Just being aware of that is useful at times. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Discriminated unions. Ooh, actually, this one's really interesting. Um, shape, yeah, I like this one a lot. I've used it before, so discriminated unions. Okay, so a shape, oh, what is the issue here? Let me reload. It really doesn't like that. Isolated modules. You don't even need to put a uh, shape there. You could just go straight up and say, that if you wanted to but so when a shape is a kind of square rectangle or circle okay so we know that it has to be one of those three types if we say foo control space kind is one of the properties here and it says square rectangle or circle so I could say kind is uh, circle let's see here so circle has a radius, rectangle has width and height, and square has just the size. So if I do circle, it knows, it should know, control space, that the only property left over on this particular type is the radius. So I can say radius 5, and I'm good to go. But if you try to do kind circle and give it like a width, it's not going to like that because it knows, based on this, uh, I guess it's calling it a discriminated union, it knows that only the circle only the the shape of kind circle is satisfied when given a radius and only a radius. So that's a very, very useful uh, thing. I've used that in um, Inquirer before. If you guys ever use Inquirer, it's a JavaScript library that lets you like do prompting and stuff like that. It has an input type of like uh, type input or type number. It, literally, something very similar to this, in fact. Are you... Does that make sense, Dave? It looks like you're thinking about it. Nope. Uh, just the dramatic gesture for no reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I really like that. It's a handy feature. Uh, let's see what other advanced types we can look at. 
Okay, numeric literal, we talked about that, you know, I mean, discriminating polymorphic this. Mm, I'd have to read up more about that. Index types. Ooh, there's that pluck function. That's that's nice. Map types. Conditional types we talked about before. Okay. Intersection types. Yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, that's pretty much the most valuable or useful um, advanced types that I've seen. We've got a lot of time left, so. Yeah. Type inference. Yes. Like right. When yes. Should I, when should I, I love that you asked that because I did want to. I did want to cover that. The question is because nobody can hear you on the mic. Um, the question is he wanted to like get more elaboration as to how TypeScript's type inference works, and what that means. And I really did want to get into this. Um, it's a very very good topic to cover. You've got a function. Oh geez, there we go. You got a function foo, it has some sort of value coming in. Um, let's say again string or number. Actually, let's let's do t. We're gonna do generic here. So I don't care what type coming in. I don't care what type it is that's coming in, but I'm gonna give you something back, right? So you could just say return value. <coughs> Result equals foo 42. Const r2 equals foo bar. R1. Okay. <coughs> I don't like those underlines, so it's complaining that I'm not using it. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. So the R1 is of type 42, and R2 is of type bar. It literally takes the incoming type and it spits it right back. And TypeScript's type inference is smart enough to know that you have a value of t coming in, and therefore when you return your value straight up, it's still t. Right? So the answer is at least, I think you already knew that part, right? Yep. Yep. So I think your question also, though, it was saying something like, okay, I'm doing something a lot more complicated in here. And he's asking, when do I need to be explicit about what I'm returning? Like, for in here, I might want to return some special object that says, uh, you know, uh, age number, right? So when do you have to actually tell TypeScript your return type, right? And the answer in my opinion, I think my opinion's right, <laughs> is that so you just return age, let's say, uh, this is a good example, like parse int value 10, right? That would be an example of converting whatever value is coming in. You might even say like two string. Oh, that doesn't like that, right? Uh, why does it not want me to do that? Well, honestly, you could just do this. You could even just say two string. You don't even have to. No. I don't care what's coming in, but it has a two string function, right? And that covers a lot of stuff, right? A lot of stuff has a two string function. so. In this case, you're saying, I don't, I don't care what comes in, but I'm going to return this age, and it's going to just take whatever you're giving me, and it's going to two-string it and make it, you know, base 10. So do we need to actually say age number here? Uh, James, what do you think? No. no, you don't, because TypeScript is smart enough to know that if I do that and I do dot age, it's a number. It knows, based on type inference, that, you know, you're returning this object very explicitly, and there's no need for you to have to redefine that up here because it already knows. And I would argue that uh, even though you can be explicit about this, and it is good to be explicit in a lot of cases, in TypeScript, it is absolutely not good to be explicit in this case. And the reason why is because maintenance, right? Like, let's say you're explicit like this, and I'm trying to think of a good example, but you... 
I guess let's just add another property in here. Obviously, it's not, it's not going to like that. So now you have to edit not just your return type, but now you have to edit this as well. And you need to say, well, bar high uh, or bar string. And then it's okay. So now you have to maintain both places, and there's really no reason for that. You can get into other situations where one of those types is in, uh, is not uh, I'm really not eloquent enough to convey this what I'm thinking right now. But basically, you get into um, it's kind of like a scenario where you have a dot comment, Oop. right, like that. So let's say you have a, a printer on value and you say returns some age of something, right? And then you get into this situation where you've got age like that and you've now added bar to it. Um, but the issue is that your comment doesn't actually reflect that it returns more than just an age at this point. So you've got to like edit all three places to maintain this code or else the comment comes out of sync, which is why I typically don't write comments if at all possible ever or if I do I put them in line to make it a little bit more obvious that uh, you know like right here um, that's not a good example string value yeah I tend to do these inline comments where possible because it's you don't have to scroll up as much. Like if you had a few arguments here, you don't have to scroll up above the foo function to see what it is this value is doing. And when you maintain your code, you can delete those um, sequential lines of code and you're good to go. Where it's, it's better that you don't have to fragment your code in different places and have to edit here, here, there, just to make sure that it's working, right? So by the same token, I would say, it's equally better to have your type defined in one and one or only place. So right there. Now, <clears throat> it could be that you're running some sort of function that is outside of your control, right? Like, let's say, and this is a really good example with uh, like json.parse, right? We don't know what type json.parse returns. So you might say like return json.parse something. Let me just go back to this and just make value a string. Okay. Now, if you hover over foo, you'll see that foo takes in a value and returns any. This is not good. We don't ever want to return any because then every, anyone calling this function has lost all context. They have no idea what they're dealing with. So anytime you see any, do, do whatever you can to get rid of it. And in this case, you could be explicit. You could say, well, I'm going to return um, something that has age of number. And that would be totally acceptable. But in the case of json.parse, um, <coughs> let's do let's do a condition here. Let's do type of let's say string or number. Uh, actually, let's just do string. We're going to say if value equals 42. We're just like really targeting this particular value, right? Return 42, um, or let's say age 42. Otherwise, return JSON dot parse value. What do we have now? So let's get rid of this for now. Any age number and that's accurate. So if we wanted this to be count, that wouldn't be accurate. It no longer satisfies that return type, right? But if you wanted to be more explicit about it, you might say this, in which case you say, well, it's still any. I don't want to do that. So now you want to say as age number. Okay, I hope this is clear. But now you hover over foo and you're getting this union type of age number count number, right? You didn't have to explicitly say that here. It just inferred that. And it did that because of this as here. If you would have taken that off, it would have been any because if you have if you have a union type that is of type count 42, 
or any, that is no different than just any. That's why you lost your type information. This type information, you had it here on line four, but now you've thrown it away because you've combined it with any in union type, which essentially destroyed it. So the best way to do it is to let TypeScript infer it as your first go-to. And if for whatever reason it's not giving you what you want, then you might have to write something up there. But doing it in line is ideal because it's closer to the implementation. And you can have five different variations of this that are all doing its separate kind of parsing or handling values in some way and returning different types. And TypeScript will infer all of those and combine it into one union type for you automatically. Right? Are there I, any downsides or like common pitfalls of using that inference uh, for return types? Not that I've seen. No, if TypeScript can actually infer your type, and uh, I'm trying to think of a scenario in which, I mean, I've definitely had times where I've, I've had to be explicit about what I'm returning. But it's usually because I'm trying to avoid the as expression yeah um and the reason why you would try to avoid the as expression is because it's a little too unknown like you're you're really trusting the developer a lot here that they know that it's that type when in fact you you know but here's the thing with json.parse you've got a string right and you you really don't know what's going on with that you if you pass any string to this function it could be anything you don't know for a fact that it's age number but if you're in your own application code calling your own APIs, there's a high level of confidence that you know what type that is. You know you're calling uh, the products API. You know it's going to return back a list of products, right? And you can be explicit about that. And you can say, you know, I've got data, and it's a, it's a list. It's a product array. It's a list of products. And you can be confident about that in that scope. But if you're going to write a utility function that's meant to be used in third-party use cases that you can't possibly anticipate, then this is a very bold statement to say that anything coming in is going to have an age of number unless you can somehow ensure that's true with some sort of parse int type of thing like what we had before. Right? Does that yeah. answer that question? Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Are you satisfied or are there times when you think you can get a little deeper on this? Okay, hold on. Okay, so his question was, what if you have an interface that has a couple of optional values, and then you've got a function that's requiring that as an argument? And then what was the second part of the question? Oh, okay. So you're going to... I see, I see. So you're going to say like... Uh, value.foo equals value.foo or bar. Like, right, exactly. you're going you're gonna to make sure that that value exists, and then does it know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, so that's that a great, function. yes, that's a great question. And, and the answer is no, but there's a way to do that. Okay. So, um, okay, in this case, if you tried OR42, it would not like that because you're trying to assign a, a number to something that it knows needs to be a string, right? But this is an optional string. So is it smart enough, is TypeScript smart enough to know that value.foo at this point is, is defined? And the answer is no. Like, it should know. It has enough information. If it were evaluating your code, it would know that there's an actual value in foo. But because it's more of a type inference and not an actual code evaluation thing, um, it doesn't go to that level. So there's, there's definitely a line to be drawn with what you can expect TypeScript to do for you. Um, and the type of check that we showed earlier is an example of it actually looking at your code because that's like the only mechanism that, type, that JavaScript really has to check a type, right? So it's actually got logic around that. But it's not going to dive into the actual assignment code that you have to figure out that you're now assigning stuff to it. So you have to tell TypeScript that it's doing that. And let me show you how. Um, assuming I can do that properly here. So we know now that 
value.foo.typescript does not know that this is that this has any value, but we do. We know on line seven we've given you a value, you know, and and it's going to be that. You could actually express that another way, which is um, actually let's say return value.foo, right? Uh, it says string. It knows that it's not undefined. That's interesting. If I took away this line. String or undefined, so it is smart enough to know at least that. Yeah, but if you do value here, it just says data. Interesting, right? So it's it's not smart enough because I'm guessing if you called foo with uh, an empty object and then you said dot foo, it still does not know that it's that it's defined. So <clears throat> it looks like we have to tell TypeScript a little bit more information here, right? Now you could do. You could do, uh, oh man, there's a, there is a way to do that. What is, I haven't used it a lot because it's a relatively new feature, but I'm trying to remember what it's called. You can basically flip the optional, um, I guess, I don't want to call it a property, but you can flip the optional bit of a property to invert it. So basically, what is that called? Oh man, it's going to drive me nuts. There's a mechanism. There's a mechanism for that. So what does it do? The mechanism you're talking about? Yeah, it's kind of like one of those helpers, like pick and whatnot. Let's see if we can get. Let, let's get some. Uh, let's see if we can find a list of those utility types. Yeah, utility types. Partial, read-only, record, pick, omit, exclude, extract, non-normal parameters, return type, instance type required. Okay, is it required? Required props, property B is missing. Hmm, uh, not quite, not quite the thing I was looking for. Omit this parameter. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to do a disservice to this feature without calling that one out, but I saw that at one point in time. Anyway, without that mechanism, though, if I were to do this without that mechanism that I can't remember, um, I would do something like this where you're saying, okay, well, return value you could be explicit about it and say uh, data and foo string. So, and it's not going to like that because it does not know that, that it's actually provided that. <clears throat> Here's an example of a big kind of garbage error message from TypeScript. My advice here is always scroll down to the very bottom. You'll see what's going on. Type undefined is not assignable to type string. It still thinks that foo can be undefined, and even though we have this line here, it still thinks that. So in this case, I would say you get rid of this explicit type return type there, and you put it here instead. And now if you hover over foo, you'll see data and foo string, and if you do foo.foo, it knows that it's a string. So that's one kind of roundabout way of doing whatever that utility thing was that I can't remember. Uh, you could probably create a utility type that does that for you if it didn't exist. But essentially, and it might not even be a, built, a TypeScript built-in utility that I'm thinking of. It might be a third-party one, so I need to track it down. But yeah, essentially, you would have to do the as expression on that particular one. And I don't love using as, but in that very exact scenario that you brought up, I think that's how I would do it. Or can you potentially pass bar as a default parameter? see if that would recognize it. I'm not understanding the question. Could you pass bar as a default parameter? Oh, yeah, right here? Like there. Yeah. Right, right. You could do stuff like this, right, where you just say uh, foo bar and then just like return foo or 42, right? Or it's a string, right? So hi. You could do that. And then here you could just say equals hi. Yeah. And it's the same thing. You could absolutely do that, but you're not returning the object anymore. You're just returning uh, an uh, an item from that object. So now you know that once you call the function, uh, it's going to return what a string. So it should have like char at and stuff like that. Yeah. So we know we're dealing with a string. String dot anchor. These are the string prototype methods. String dot char. Yeah. All that. That is one thing about TypeScript that's interesting. Is like how do you know what type you're dealing with at any point in time? And usually that's how I do it. I, I hit the dot. And I say, okay, well, these are string prototype methods. 
Or I do something like const result equals that and then hover over it and it says string right there. <clears throat> it's kind of or in this case you could probably just hover over foo and it'll tell you that it's going to return a string. That's another way to know what type you're dealing with. So there's like three different ways to kind of figure out what type you're dealing with at any particular point in time. But yeah, that was an excellent question. I wanted it. That was actually something I planned on talking today, but I forgot about it. Yeah, man. I'm 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 glad you asked that because I was looking for filler and uh, we've only got five minutes left, so I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Pre range. <laughs> Such a great question. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Come here next week. Any other questions? Uh, Bleeding. Yeah, what is that? Are you having one more of these? One more coming up on, is it Thursday? I think it's Friday because we have a party on Thursday. Yep. Yeah, so that'll be my last day here. Yep. <coughs> some cake for the last talk. Woohoo! Get me fat. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, thanks for coming, y'all. Yep.